Welcome to Harvest Valley Worship Center's Sermon of the Week. You can discover more about our church, pastors, and special guests at hvwc.com. We hope that you are blessed by today's message. Many of you know my friend Peter DeWitt. He prayed for 100 people before he saw the first healing. Because when he, when he, 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 Mark Crawford came and joined him at a meeting and read all of his friend's mail, including his, and was like, this guy who just showed up knows the people around me better than I know them. The Holy Spirit's real. And uh, he knew that then if that's real, then healing must be real and all these other things. You know, Peter's very logical. And uh, so he just began praying for healing for people. And it was about 100 times in before he saw somebody healed. We do not judge faith on fruit. I'm going to say it again. We do not judge faith on fruit. Hey! Amen, hallelujah, brother. Come on. Amen. Amen. That's exactly it. It's exactly it. You realize you got something that ain't yours and you go uh, cast the devil out of, uh, and you heal somebody and that thing leaves you. Praise God. All right. So there's a theme for 2023 we're going to be pressing into all year. Uh, we're going to continue to really want you to have a daily encounter with the Holy Spirit, right? That's not changing. That, that should be who we are every day. We need to have a daily encounter with the Holy Spirit. And this year, one of the things that we believe is that this is a year to expand territory through synergy. We're going to expand territory by doing things together that produce a fruit and a result that is greater than anything we can do on our own. I love it. I got my core team on the second row saying amen, and that just makes me so excited. I uh, just like, woo! They're like, mm hmm, yeah. Oh, man. I really look forward to this message. Is there's certain messages every year that I anticipate, and um, like with the with the message that I preached a few weeks ago on the spirit of mammon, that one had been in my spirit since February. You know, it was one of those messages that I knew that if we could grab onto the reality of dealing with this, it would change the outlook, the culture, the finances of this church and you individually, because you cannot serve two masters, and, and we've been stuck serving two masters. And and here's one of the things that, that I believe that this year is going to go against is a Jezebelic spirit. Here's what. The independent, my way is higher than your way. And what I want is better than what God wants. The fiercely independent spirit in its root is rebellion. <laughs> it got so quiet. Okay, so so here's here's the thing. Uh, a Jezebel spirit is a spirit. So so let me let me just give some biblical context around spirits and this kind of thing. So in Ephesians it says that we we um, actually war against principalities and powers against the rulers of darkness of this age. Right. So there there's there there's demons and there's angels. There's two angels for every one demon. Do you guys remember that, right? Like one third followed Satan and fell. There's, there's twice as many angels doing good than demons doing bad. So why, why are we running scared of demons? All right. So, side, side, side note, right? Here's the thing. When we talk about spirits in Scripture, we see certain people, individuals, and th activities that exemplify an attitude and exemplify a demonic stronghold. And so with Jezebel, we saw clearly that she hated the prophets, right? Hated the prophet. Spoke intimidation and threats. Used control and manipulation to get her way. 
And in order for manipulation is witchcraft, right? If, if, if I want to get my way with Terry and I say, Terry, you need to, you need to serve in this ministry. And now, now what I do is I begin to tell him all the reasons why, why God wants him to be in this ministry and all the reasons why the devil doesn't want to be in his ministry. And I pin him in a corner where no matter what, the only thing he can say is yes. Otherwise, he looks bad. He's shamed. He's, you know, all that stuff. That's actually a Jezebel spirit. Okay, it's manipulation. It is using using items and actions and, and pressure in order to get somebody to do what I want them to do. That's a control thing. Okay. Now, as a leader, it's really hard to not control things, right? I think leaders struggle with this spirit more than anyone else because they want to get things done and they want to do things together. And so in that place, it's very easy to go, well, my way or the highway, right? And that's not healthy, right? We don't want that, right? So what happens is that because of control and manipulation in people's lives. Like Terry comes out of that situation. He's like, I'm not trusting leaders again, right? Because that was not good. It was not healthy. How many of you have ever had a wound from a leader? Okay, many of you should have raised your hand. And it's okay if it was me, because I know I've done it. Right? I'm, I, I am, I'm not all that in a bag of chips. Fritos. Not for 21 days, days anyways. (laughs) Let's go. That's great. (laughs) All right, I'm going to get to the point here. The point is, is that if you've been wounded through control and manipulation, your response is, I am going to control I now you now begin to operate in the same spirit. Your wound actually sets you on a course to do the same thing. Whoo! I know I'm I'm not speaking to anybody here. Just me. I get it. We're cool. No worries. No worries. But what we do is now we set ourselves up as independent from anyone speaking into our lives or providing godly leadership in our lives. And because we've been wounded by leadership or by somebody, or they didn't acknowledge my gift or they didn't listen to my prophetic word. That's the one I hear the most. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Like, boy, we just like think that we walk on water. As if any word that comes out of my mouth must be blessed of the Lord. Like, guys, here's the thing. There's a difference between judgment and discernment. There's a difference between, now they're both similar, right? Because you're going to tell some things apart. What judgment does is, is and it births this, this witchcraft, this rebellion, this independent spirit. What judgment does is it says, I am going to judge you because you didn't do what I think God wanted you to do. Now, that's not discernment, that's judgment. What discernment does, okay, now I'm speaking to some hearts right now because you guys are having a revelation of some deep things that have been in your hearts and God's going to deal with you right now. And you're going to be free of it. Amen? The only time God wants to confront something is to bring freedom and healing, okay? So here's what's happened. You've actually operated in judgment, which has turned your prophetic gift into witchcraft. Because here's what's happened. You're hearing and you're seeing clearly, but because you've set yourself up as judge, you're now operating in the wrong spirit. What discernment does, discernment recognizes, I cannot judge my master's servant. Discernment, I can't judge. If somebody doesn't receive my word, I can't judge them. I have to entrust that to the Lord and use my discernment, which says, God, what are you doing in that? Discernment looks for what the will of God is in a situation instead of judging it. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. 
Come on, we're we just going we to enter 2023 hitting home runs, baby. We, we're going after it. Because let me tell you, discernment is required. We have to have discernment. We have to know, hey, they didn't receive your word. Maybe there's something off in their life. Maybe there's, they're not hearing God. Maybe not. But it's not your place to judge them. Woo! It's not your place to judge them. Because the minute that you judge them, in the same judgment, it's poured back on you. Woo! Press down, shaking together and running over into your bosom. It's that same judgment that you used is used against you. So discernment says, something's off with this. I don't know what that is. Lord, what are you saying? How do you want me to pray? And what are you doing? Because I refuse to judge your servant. Oh, oh come on now. I feel like this is just going to set some of you free in your prophetic. Your prophetic has been on hold. Your, your ability to hear God and speak forth what God is telling you has actually been on hold because God doesn't want you defiling the church. Are we doing okay? Okay. None of this is in my notes. But, but I, I'm just telling you, like the Lord, the Lord is purifying this house because here's what's going to happen. We're going to change this community. God wants to have a place where He can pour through. And let me tell you, if we're operating in a spirit of judgment, if we're operating in a spirit of judgment, we will miss what God is doing. The model that we get for this spirit of, of, of manipulation, and it goes right after the prophets, is this picture in the Old Testament of Jezebel. Okay? All right, now let me, just, let me just say a couple more things about this. We decided in 2022 to go after a couple of the major strongholds that are in this community. And we chose to do some teaching so that you could see it understand it and get free of it we're going to do an activation real quick about the prophetic stuff and i don't want to leave that okay just so you know we're going to come back to that so we 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 went after the jezebel spirit which is that fiercely independent i've been hurt therefore you can't hurt me right like and i i refuse to actually create synergy or come into alignment or come under any spiritual authority in my life because I know better because you've become the judge instead of a discerner. Okay. So we dealt with that, right? We went after culture of honor. How do we relate well with each other? Because we have to understand that, that in order for us to do well together, we have to come under one another. We have to cooperate with each other. Right? There's no synergy on an island. You can't, you can't do everything by yourself, people. Okay? And the wound and the trauma is there to try and get you to be isolated. This is a call mark of the church in North Idaho. I'm just telling you, the believers, fiercely independent. And there's handfuls of amazing people like all of you here today, right? But I, I'm telling you, this, this has to break in this community for revival to come. All right, will you stand with me? We're just going to deal with this Jezebel thing, and then we'll talk about the other two and get into 2023. I'm glad you guys have until uh, about 4 o'clock this afternoon. It's going to be great. <laughs> All right, Heavenly Father, I just release over each person right now a spirit of forgiveness to forgive those offenders to finally release them and let them go. Let the leader go. Picture him in your head and say, God, I give that person to you that offended me, that controlled me, that manipulated me, that abused me spiritually. I give them to you because you are my protector. You are my judge. You are my defender, God. Not me. Not me. And I humble myself the day, God. And I come under your mighty hand and I entrust my spiritual health to you alone. And God, I trust that you will place me and set me in families. You will 
cause my life to thrive and grow in community. And I do not have to go it alone. And I do not have to be the judge anymore. I'm just going to give you a moment to talk with the Lord on that. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, if you receive some healing this morning, will you say amen? Oh, good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, I'm not going to back off from saying hard things anymore. You can be seated. Uh, I'm just going to say it, and I pray to God that that each one of you just receive what the Holy Spirit has for you in that, that you not take things the wrong way, but that you just receive what God has for you. Amen? All right. So we went after the Jezebel thing. The other one that we went after is a major territorial spirit. Um, And I think it actually is, this spirit is set aside. Uh, We see a picture of of a a Leviathan in Job, this giant creature. One of the the terms they use for that is like an alligator type creature. It's kind of how it's described. And we know what they do is they grab onto something and they twist around and try and bury it. (laughs) and suffocate it until it's dead, right? So they'll grab, spin, and take down to the depths and try and hold it there until you can't breathe anymore. And so what we see with the Leviathan spirit, it's one of the trademarks is that if I am having a conversation with somebody and they're hearing something that I'm not saying, it's getting twisted around, right? And I think I'm an okay communicator, but I realized this year I'm pretty bad. I'm not very good at it. I'm not. I'm not. Because I would realize, like, I thought I was being clear, but I was not being clear. I thought I said, but I was not actually saying it. And so I'm like, Lord, what is going on with that? And he began to, he's unwinding me still. And I think we're going to do some big work on this this year. Uh, we We did a lot on communication. But one of the first things we have to understand is that in order for our communication to be clear and untwisted, we have to have our hearts clear and untwisted between us and the Father. We actually, you know, the first series that I'm going to do this year is on holiness because we, we've ignored our part in holiness and we've wondered why we don't see the fruit of holiness in our lives. So it's going to be a great series. I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. Um, but the reality is, is, If we don't have our communication good with God, I can't have great communication with Kim. Because if my heart is twisted, if my heart is twisted, it's really hard for me to hear what she's saying. Come on now. Come on now. So dealing with this Leviathan spirit, is I think it's, it's a big issue that we have to go after. How many of you have ever been offended by somebody and you found out years later that it wasn't what they said, it wasn't what they meant, they had no intention? (laughs) <laughs> right that's that spirit at work right easily offended easily twisted up right all right guys just know that that um, i can talk about these spirits because these are active battles every time i go to preach i have to deal with these demons like i've got to wrestle through each of these issues before i come to the pulpit Yesterday was one of my hardest days of spiritual warfare that I've had in a long time. A long time. Um, And it's because of what we're doing now. I'm not mad about it. God's revealing and healing and showing me stuff that I got to fix and deal with. Things I got to change. Areas where I need to set better boundaries. (laughs) Establish different things. Like there's just like there's so much there. But in that process, it's like, oh, there's a purpose to the battle. One of my good friends who's a pastor in uh, Fort Wayne, or not Fort Wayne, Fort Worth, Texas, says, You want to understand spiritual warfare, like for a spiritual leader, it's basically like 
multiply by how many people they're pastoring, multiply your spiritual warfare by that. Uh, because there is a responsibility that those of us in leadership carry to take care for your souls. And so we battle on your behalf. And oftentimes that's in just dealing with ourselves. So um, I, I, I just think it's important to understand that these things, um, we're, we're, we're sitting on the edge of a waterfall and about to fly about to like, like go over the edge into a place that God is destined for us that is so free, that is so free, more free than we've ever been. We're entering into a time and a season of the greatest freedom. And you know what it's going to require of us? Discipline. It's going to require us to be disciplined. It's going to require our holiness. It's going to require our submission. It's going to require our obedience. It's going to require cooperation. It's going to take synergy. It's going to require that we do it together. You are not alone. I'm in the battle with you. Our whole team is. We all, we all go through our different types of warfare. Like, you know, I know that leadership's about to blow up when we're being critical of each other. Like if there's, a, if there's tension in leadership, oh, it's about to get good. I'm serious. I'm serious. We, so, so when there's tension, we, we, one of the things that, that I've talked to with a couple of our leaders about, when it's awkward, lean into it. Lean into the awkward because that's where trust is built. All right. Well, I haven't gotten past the first sentence on three pages. You guys are in trouble. All right. Um, I'm going to read a little bit here so we can move through. 2022 was a year of establishing and purifying. God began a work as we taught on the three spiritual strongholds of this region, Leviathan, Twisted Communication, Jezebel, Rebellious Independence that attacks the prophetic destiny of people, Mammon, a spirit of poverty. So those were the three things that we went after last year. And you'll notice that God is moving pieces. Some people are no longer fellowshipping here. We can look around the room and go, wow, it feels like it's a little lighter in here. Okay, right? And some have chosen to plug in here at a much deeper level. So the reality is, is that we are going to be focusing on making sure that everyone who is called the Harvest Valley connects engages, gets mentored, discipled, growing, serving, developing their leadership, and fulfilling God's will for their life right here at Harvest Valley. If you're called here, I'm asking you to plug in a little deeper in this season. I don't know what that looks like for you, but I'm asking that you Come deeper with us. Because what we're about to do takes synergy. It takes, it takes us getting out of our comfort zones. We want every barrier to be removed so that our fellowship can grow in a healthy way through evangelism. I'm not interested in parachurch growth. I'm not interested in interchurch development where we're recruiting people from other churches to come to our church. That is not my heart. I don't like that. When people come from other churches and I notice that they're here three or four weeks and they're like, yeah, well, I've been fellowshipping. Have you talked to your pastor yet? Why are you running? What are we doing? What's happening, right? So, you know, like we have those conversations. Right? Um, but we are a refuge for healing. So some people will come for six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks, or a year, and then they go right back to where they came from because they received the healing they came to get. That's part of our mantle. So don't be surprised that some people come and some people go. Some people get exactly what they came for and then they left. But some people are called here, and when the going gets tough, we ain't going anywhere. We're not going, we stick with you. We're not going to be moved. 
We're a, we're a launch pad for transformation. We want to see this community changed. We must be able to go deeper in our walk with the Lord together. <gasps> together. We have to do this together. As we looked at the pieces moving, watching the setup from the Lord, you know, we've had great anticipation for 2023. The season that we're entering into is going to be dynamic. We're going to be, <laughs> we are going to be needed more than ever in our community. Guys, we're going to be needed out there. So we actually have to have some way to make sure that if you're connecting here, that you're growing and healthy and able to go out as salt instead of tasteless. Instead of mirroring a more, um, a nicer version of the world. That's not who we are. We are light. So we have to make sure everybody, okay, your light's a little dim. Come on, let's find holiness. Let's get that light real, real bright. Because that's what makes the light really holy is the Spirit of God in you, right? And then you've got to shed off anything that's preventing the light from coming out, right? And that's called healing, right? Getting, getting so that you can shine. I, I believe very strongly that we are going to see a lot of souls saved this year because of we are salt and light leading people to Christ this year. And that's my hope is that together we can begin to grow through a community transformed by the gospel, by the good news. Not just doing good things for people, that's part of it, but presenting the gospel in a manner and living a lifestyle that is attractive to the world. We're aware that the year may be a busy one. Lord have mercy. Our, our whole leadership team is kind of, but we're beside ourselves a little bit with all the, all the potential things going on. And um, can I, I, I was praying really hard about this. I'm like, okay, Lord, what do you want? And, and the Lord's just yelling in my ear, Sabbath, 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 Sabbath. And I really believe that if we can lay hold of the discipline of the Sabbath and, and the freedom that comes with the Sabbath every week, giving one day. Right, come on, we just finished a, a whole series on first fruits and tithing. The only time that God asks for is the Sabbath. You can't tithe time. You can't give a tenth, but you can give a seventh. What is that? That's the Sabbath. That's what God asks for, to, to take the Sabbath and make it holy. What does that look like? We're going to actually do a whole series on Sabbath. I'm really excited. I've been digging it out. We're going to get into that. That'll probably be the second series. We're mapping it out. There's something really powerful when you choose to rest in the Lord and let go of all the other things. And if you're resting in the Lord, it's amazing the capacity you have on the other six days. It's amazing what actually gets done when you rest with the Lord. Because he actually will empower you to supernaturally do things that you can't normally do. Same thing with your finances. You give him the 10th and he does more with the 90 than you can do on your own with the 100. You give him the Sabbath, he does more with the 6 than you could do in 7. It's the same principle. You with me? All right, Sabbath. All right, dealt with that. Okay, cool. All right, early 2021, actually in the fall, sorry, in the fall of 2021, the Lord began a, a concept called the turn. How many of you remember this talking about the turn, that we are in a turn, right? So we go, we're cruising along, and then all of a sudden we notice like, oh, there's an exit we should take, and so we start turning, right? So when you're racing and you're going fast, you have to hit the brakes, slow down in order to make the turn and not go off the rails, right? To not like end up in the ditch. You have to slow down. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So for me, I wasn't aware of it, but 
the Lord had me put the brakes on and we put our brakes on in the fall of 2019 when Meek and I stepped back for over a year. I was hitting the brakes real hard. <laughs> right? And this church hit the brakes. Everything hit the brakes. We went through this process, right? I think it's good to acknowledge. And we were so grateful for Jim and Kathy and their stewardship of the house while we were gone and, and our leadership team and, and John and Lois and the way that they as a team led this body while Meek and I were gone because we needed healing. We needed to get right, right? We needed to hear God again with some clarity about what are we doing? Where are we going? And we were both honestly surprised that he said, go back to harvest. I knew in my heart that the work here wasn't done, that God had more things to do, and God never told me to do anything else. But let me tell you, ministry can be hard. So that for us was the breaks, and I think it was a breaking point for the church. Like just the breaks were put on. And then, you know, we come back in, in, in December of, of 2020, we get reinstalled and we're, we're now we're, we're plugging along. And so we're actually just on two years of having been back. And I think it's good to talk about relevant history because one of the realities about where we're at now is that we are through the turn. One of the funny things is that when you're going fast, you hit the brakes and you turn, you know, that like if you've got trash in the car, it just came up. <laughs> you got, you know, and then if your windows are down and you turn hard enough, the trash might just fly out the window. So we had a lot of kind of what, what felt like a little bit of chaos there for a little while in 2020, specifically in 2021. Um, all of 2021 felt a little chaotic. In 2022, things just began to settle in and we realized, okay, we are in this turn. And since we're in the turn, it's not time to put the, put the gas on yet. We've got to establish foundation. There's some things that we need to do. So as we looked into 2022, we realized like, oh, we're in the turn. We're moving this direction. We can see the end, the exit point. Is it time to hit the gas yet? Do we have momentum? I think when Elizabeth Reisinger came, I think that was a turning point for momentum for us, which is why it has been difficult are you guys okay? I'm just being real. Okay. It's been very hard for some people to stay because where we're going is going to require some things of us. You want to operate in signs, miracles, wonders? Many of us were like, whoa, look at what's happening with Elizabeth. Amazing. She stayed with us at our house. We didn't have very many conversations with Elizabeth at our house. You know why? She's praying. She's in the bedroom alone with the Lord. There's a cost. There's a cost. And we haven't been willing to pay it yet. Some of us don't even know what that cost is yet. Some people saw the writing on the wall. This is going to cost me. Oh, i got to go. <laughs> Not everybody. I think just some. But the reality is, is that it's going to cost us something. And I think that was a moment where it was like, oh, there's clarity, like this is what it can look like. I can see it. I received the prophetic word that this house is going to spark revival across the state of Idaho. Einstein, smart dude said if you keep doing what you've always done you're going to get what you always got we can't keep doing things the same way I don't know what all of it's going to look like I don't I don't, but I need help, right? So I'm going to get some coaching this year. I, I'm going to get, I'm going to, you know, I, I just see how much I don't know. And I'm doing my best, but I, I just keep praying for me, right? Because the responsibility of, of the potential weight of the prophetic word would be overwhelming if it wasn't for the spirit of the Lord. If it wasn't for God's anointing, I don't think I'd be here. 
But because we're submitted to just obey the Lord and do what God's asked us to do, I have no idea what all this is going to look like, but I really know we got to do it together. We got to do it together. Okay? All right. You guys are getting a bunch of free stuff today. This is cool. Can I just tell you, I do not want to look back at the land and what the land used to look like. I don't want to begin to look backwards and go, oh, I remember when and I wish it was. Because where God is taking us is not where we've been and we don't fully grasp how great this is going to be yet. We haven't quite seen it yet. The prophetic word has been spoken and it's exciting. And it's like, oh, this is going to be great. But let me just tell you, Amos says, surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. So when the prophets speak, this is why God wants to heal the prophets because we got more vision to uncover. We got more things to expand, more things to open up for us. The wounded prophets will never take you to your destiny. They'll always take you to your history. Am I right, Dennis? But the healed prophet will release you into your destiny in ways you didn't even know was possible. And it's time for us to uncover what is next by diligently seeking the Lord. By diligently praying. By diligently hearing. By diligently say it out loud. Speak it out. God, I think God's saying... You know, what what a great thing to do is like, you get a prophetic word, you grab Kevin. Come here, Kevin. I'm going to grab Kevin, right? Kevin's been given authority over some of the prophetic words in this house, right? So I'm going to grab Kevin. I'm going to say, Kevin, I really feel like God's saying X, Y, and Z, da, da, da. And Kevin's going to, in his discernment, he's not going to judge you, but he's going to discern, is this a word for the Lord today or not? Do you need to hang on to that word? Hey, that word's actually incomplete. God has more for you. You need to write that down and he's going to flesh more out because that's an actual instruction he might give, right? If you are a wounded prophet, you're going to, he can't hear God. He rejected my word. Let me tell you, that brings dishonor into the house. Woo. So Kevin, come back, come back. I'll push you around, don't worry. So, so Kevin says, Hey, Chris, that word's not for today. I need you to hang on to that, which is a hard thing for Kevin to do. But it's good, like he's learning, right? Learning to say, no, actually, you know what? The Lord's going to save that for another time, another season. If you're like, I knew it. That exposed something in your heart and Kevin needs the freedom to say, hey, can we just pray real quick? Can I pray for you? Because I'm not saying you're not hearing God. I'm not denying whether or not, like we don't tell people whether or not they're hearing God on anything. Unless they're telling Mary's prophesying through them, then we're like, oh, time out. <laughs> it's happened to me in a service. Yeah, no, that, that's a real story actually. So, so, so one, of the, one of the things that, that, that we have to be able to do is receive some correction. We have to receive some guidance, some leadership. And some of you think you're so far above us Oh man, you think your prophetic skill is like so far beyond any leadership? If you come in that spirit, you will not prophesy in this house because we will not allow you to breathe breathe that into this atmosphere. Whoo! The ego gotta go. Can we be pliable? Can we be teachable? Can we trust somebody that they might hear God too and have another piece of my puzzle? Right? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, this is going online too. It's going to be great. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to move on. I'm going to read some scriptures that I believe our, our core team threw some scriptures at me for the year. I'm going to read through a bunch of them and then we're going to pray. Okay. Are you ready? Romans 15, 5 and 6. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another, 
according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You guys get that? Like-minded toward one another, right? One mind, one mouth, glorifying God. Romans 15, 13 says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may abound in hope. Acts 4.31 says, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Where were they? They were assembled together and prayed. It wasn't one righteous man praying in a corner. It was all of them assembled together and the place was shaken. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Matthew 18, 18 through 20. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two or three on earth agree, could say agree, Concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together, say it. Where two or three are gathered together, in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly Broken. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth. This is actually the foundational passage on my series for holiness. So, starting next week. Woo woo. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Acts 2.1 When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord, one accord, one accord in one place. This word, one accord, is really um, interesting in the Greek. It's actually like, like the picture, right? Like that they use, if you're going to use one accord, it's the picture of a symphony playing together in one accord. We're not all the same instrument. We don't all sing the same notes. Hallelujah. Right? We're not the same, but we can play together in one accord. Amen? So when they heard in Acts 4.24, right? Dealing with these uh, apostles being jailed. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with, again, one accord. One accord. And said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. Right? Verse chapter 5, verse 12 of Acts, and through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Acts 8, verse 6, and the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did, for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were, pro- who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Oh, man, when we can receive what God is doing in one accord, great joy in the city because God's moving. 
Philippians 1, 27 through 28. I'm almost done. It's okay. Can't get enough scripture, y'all. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit. <clears throat> that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. Striving together for the faith of the gospel and not in any way terrified by your adversaries. <laughs> which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you, salvation, and that from God. One of the passages I believe is going to be really key for us is the, is the prayer of Jabez out of, of 1 Chronicles 4.10. It says, Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. That your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. This theme that's come to us over and over again is expanding territory through synergy. Expanding territory is to be a visionary, to be a pioneer, but it's also about infrastructure. Um, let, me, let me say this. We have to develop the ways to make sure that needs are met and healing can occur as visionaries are raised up to take more territory. So when you go, like if you're going to expand territory, do you know what the process would be if the city of Sandpoint wanted to grow larger? They would annex some of the, uh, the, the, um, the area in common with the county that's attached there's certain areas there where they literally can go to the county and they can annex it from the county and then they start a process which the city can do anytime they want to. They can annex parts of the county and begin to put it under the authority of the city of Sandpoint from the county. Okay, they can do that anytime they want. Now, obviously, there's going to be argument and whatever and to come to some agreement, but when that agreement comes, which the area of city impact is that area that's that, that, the, that the city of Sandpoint will take is that area of city impact. What happens first before they do an annexation is that they flood the area of city impact with infrastructure. They will make sure that the area of city impact has water, has sewer, and it's all managed by the city before they actually annex the property. Because it makes the annexation make sense. So the infrastructure is already there. Guys, part of enlarging territory is making sure that the infrastructure at Harvest Valley is strong enough and good enough to make sure that if somebody who doesn't know Jesus gets saved and they can get discipled, the infrastructure is good enough so that when people come in and they're like, I feel God here, I want to be here, I've got gifts that I want to give, that they can actually get plugged in, assimilate, and begin to grow. This is the infrastructure. If, if you want to expand territory, we actually have to see people saved and discipled. We can't do it alone. So we actually have to do this together. Are you guys, there's a theme. When we do it together, there is synergy and there is power and we will see it move quickly. So part of expanding territory is dealing with our infrastructure as a church. I don't know what that's going to look like. I'm praying that I get help. I don't know. But I will tell you, expansion is not just about going places and taking places. It's about establishing where we can go from. That was good. It's about establishing what are we doing here that allows this place to grow and reach the community through evangelism and discipleship. Amen? Are you guys with me? Good. Praise God. Praise God. That's synergy. When we can come together in one accord, it's synergy. All right. Synergy is the interaction or cooperation of two or more organizations, substances, or other agents to produce a combined effect that is greater than the sum of their separate effects. So what Kim can do on her own, and what I can do on my own, is good. It's great. But what we can do together is multiplied 
far greater than one plus one. So, in every way of life as we encounter God, we have synergy with God. That's, this is like, I feel like it's a bit of a no-brainer, but I needed to say it. One of the keys to synergy is exactly what, what Dennis pointed out when he talked about Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You have to have synergy with you and God, first and foremost. And then we work on synergy with each other. Let me tell you, if you're struggling to have synergy with God, don't lose synergy here. Because some of us will drag you along until you get it. Synergy is also about the gathering. Gathering is important. It's where we find synergy in praise. It's where we find synergy in worship. It's where we find synergy in teaching and all of us receiving the word. There's going to be synergy in the life journals. There's synergy in this fast. We are going to produce some things that are far greater uh, together than we could ever do on our own. We've got to embrace this. For this year, we are going to focus on synergy. We're going to focus on coming together and doing things together. Let me tell you, when we pray together, when we worship together, when we warfare together, when we read together, when we fast together, when we cry together, when we celebrate together in every aspect, in every area of life, we are better together. As we enter into the fast, we must press into synergy. So that's why I love that we're starting with this and, and we're going to be taking territory, expanding territory. We're going to overwhelm darkness in this community because our lights are going to get t- turned on full tilt. It's going to be great, right? But I, I want us to pray together. And I want some of you to prophesy over 2023 this morning. If you're able If you need to sit, you can come sit on the front row. Everyone else, I want you to come up and we're just going to spend a few minutes as we close out our time launching into 2023 together in prayer over this year. I've done my best to tell you what I'm thinking, what I believe God wants to do, what our team believes God wants to do. They got so much more to add than what I shared, but um, we need to pray. Because if we're not, if we're not, getting synergy from heaven, we're going to get fried. All right. Yeah, Terry. Yeah. Sounds great. Of course. Do you want to share now while everybody comes up? Come on up, Terry. All right, guys, come on up. Feel free to sit on the front row if if you feel like you need to sit. If you can stand, stand. Thanks. Uh Uh, brothers and sisters, this isn't about me that I want to share with you. Uh, it's about somebody else. And we were just talking about synergy and the power of prayer and what that does and how God listens. I want to tell you about a guy by the name of Steve Trujillo. He was a pastor. He is a pastor at the church that Catherine and I came from in Oregon. And he is such a powerful man of God. When things were going crazy in Portland and all the protests were going on downtown, he and I went down in the middle of it and prayed for safety, for healing for the city. This guy, he thought I was there to protect him because I told him, I said, when you go downtown, don't go without me. But really, I wanted to to be there with him because he has such an impact on my life. And when I was sick, you guys, most of you know I had heart issues. I was sick for four years in and out of the hospital, and I finally got transplant uh, heart and kidney. And when I was sick afterwards, 
I was talking to people and they just kept telling me, there are people in these other states in the United States that were praying for you. That I told so and so, and they told their church, and that whole church was praying for you. I heard about stories of people in other parts of the world that were praying for me. And God did so many miracles during those four years. And I believe it was because these people were praying for me. And I just want to ask you to pray for Steve. He's got a brain tumor. And it, it hit him right after Catherine and I left Portland. And he's been on alternative treatments and radiation. It's inoperable. And I just got a message yesterday that he's having more seizures and he's having more cognitive issues than he was before, which means the tumor's growing. I just want to ask you guys to do for him what all those other people did for me and pray for him every day that God would heal him and tell people about this man of God. He came from Cuba. His family came from Cuba and he has been serving in the city of Portland for 22 years. And he's got a heart for that city. He wants to see it turn around. And I want him to continue to have that vision in the future. So I just ask you to pray for him. Please remember him in your prayers. Dear Lord, um, I just come before you right now asking that you would, you, you already know about Steve. You already know what he's going through. You already know about the spiritual warfare that's going on. That's trying to defeat him and his family. Lord, I just ask for your healing touch in this man's life and the life of his family in the life of that church. I just pray that you would heal him miraculously, that you would take this, the next time they do an MRI on him, that it, it would be completely gone. Lord, I know you can do it. I've seen it myself. And I know that nothing is too big for you. So I just ask that you would touch his life. Touch him today. Do something miraculously in his life, in his body, and take this tumor away. We ask this all in your name, Lord. Amen. Come on, amen. 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 We'll be praying for Steve. All right. Um, I, I'm just going to invite whoever wants to pray over the church to pray over the church. Pray over this house. Pray for what God's going to do in this community in 2023. Who's ready to go? You know, I've been thinking that us reading the Bible every day, committing to that, and praying every day, committing to that, and doing it together, is it's like a relationship. I love this man here, John LaPointe. But if I never talk to him, how how long do you think our relationship would last? If I kept things away from him, which I've done before, it's not very good. We don't have a very good relationship. If we don't do things together, 
How are we strong? Church, guys, really, think about this. God wants a relationship with us. He doesn't want us to be pretend Christians or Sunday morning Christians. He wants a relationship. The God of heaven wants a relationship with me and with you, with every one of you. So what does that cost? With God's help, I'm going to give up sugar. I can't do that on my own. Do you know that sugar is very addictive? <laughs> so, so I can't do things on my own power. I got to have help, like Deanne. I got to have help, like Kim. People that I connect up with on Facebook or that I can reach out and send a text or I can talk to. You know, Chris teases me about giving him pushback as a core team member, but I love this man. And, I, and I've been one of his strongest supporters because we're in this together. And we got to get that in our hearts, people. We got to get that we're together. If we're not together, it's like John and me. If we never talked, if we were never together, what kind of relationship would that be? So that's my prayer. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would give us the vision to do this together, that you would give us the desire to do this together, that you would give us the ability that you would change us from the inside out. In Jesus' name. I'm going to give up sugar too, and we're going to help each other. <laughs> Who needs help with sugar as a theme? Would you? Okay, come, come on, sugar people. Sugar people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, this is a thing. Um, you started, so why don't you finish? And, um, Lord, what do you do? God, we're recognizing that we are hopelessly lost in this. And God, we can only do this with your help and with the help of each other. That you would free us from the sugar addiction that we have and that our addiction would be to you. And that our desire would be for you and that we recognize we can do this being together i just pray in jesus name freedom amen i'm wondering if there are ways we can help each other like i'd love to like maybe text with you Right afterwards, right afterwards, or put a little notice on the wall, or I don't know something. I'm wondering. I'm, I'm wondering if there are other themes. Sugar. Yeah, but we will. We'll. I, I want to finish praying over the church here, so we'll get into the fast in, a, in, in a, maybe in a little bit more. Do you got something for you want to pray or prophesy over the church? No. All right. Okay. You, I'll. I'll let you. I've had this on my heart for a long time. The reason most of us, I think, came here to this church is because of the Holy Spirit and because of our teacher. I have visions, day visions, not a lot of dreams. I have a vision of you. You want to take over this area, this region. God has more for you. It's the world mm -hmm. he has for you. This church is a pinnacle of the whole world. I believe that God is raising up churches. He's raising up his people 
He's weeding the wheat from the chaff. He's only bringing up the best of the best. This church is going to be known, I believe, worldwide. People are going to come to this church because of who we are, what we're going to be going through, our teaching, our experiences, our tribulations. When I was sick, laying in bed, the, the Lord had conversations with me on certain things. And this area is going to be a place of healing. The whole region is going to be a place of healing of one kind or another. Chris, you, Mika, and Quinn. Wow. It's, it's going to be, you, you are going to be the demonstrator of what a family is going to be. We are going to follow. All of us are going to follow the pastor because he has it right. You know that. I've seen you in the future. You, under, under Chris, are going to go a lot of places. I see you teaming up with Chris, but also going out by yourself. Each one of us. He's talking about Dennis? I'm talking about Dennis. All right. Yeah, yeah I think we heard that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, the way I see it is, is, is hard to explain, but God around the world is setting up different churches yes. in different countries. Yes. We belong to this church. We belong to the church that is going to change lives. Come on. What Chris is teaching us now are key principles of who we're going to be. This year, I believe that we're all going to step out into what God has for Amen. us. Amen. God has appointed us, everyone. God has something for each and every one of us. We are the body of Christ. We will, this year, step into this new season, into this season of what God has for us. I don't know what that's going to look like Amen. for me or, or anybody else except for Chris. I know what's going to happen to Chris. Chris, you're going to hear the voice of God. You're going to hear him call your name. Whenever you start to sideswipe, he's going to call you back. He's going to say, Chris, and you're going to look around. There's nobody going to be there. You are going to know he's there. But this church, people, I'm telling you, Press in to what God has for you. Amen. And that's for me too. Yeah. I have got to break out of my shell. I have got to bring on some boldness. I have got to bring on some courage. And be the person that God wants me to be. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Well, we receive it. We receive it. Yep, over the whole house. That's good. Hallelujah. We're receiving prophetic words. We're receiving prophetic words, and then we're going to pray. One thing that um, Mike touched on, and I believe I know for me it's a it's a big deal. I've been hold. We've all been holding back something from this year, or last year. Now it's time to break out to start and work together. The things that we're already been planning on doing, and the things that we're already trained for, that we need to get ahead and start doing it. It's just a matter of getting on board, and all doing it together. That's great. That's great. Who else has words? Come on, Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> I drug her up here. With her. Um, oh, you look good up here, by the way. I didn't know if you knew that. You look good up here. <laughs> um, so Chris knows that every year I have a leadership word. So the last two years, it's been community and opportunity, which you can't spell without unity. So when you're talking about synergy, that's what we're talking about is unity. And um, this year, God gave me the word possibilities because nothing is impossible 
if we're in unity. But God woke me up yesterday morning. Thank God he woke me up. Um, and in my head was rain and rains. And I was like, Lord, what's that? And, then, and it's that first conscious thought. What is that? And as I just sat with the Lord, he told me, and when you said go deeper, he told me, I want you to go deeper at Harvest Valley because he has been asked, God has been asked to rule and reign here. And that because Chris and the core team has given the Holy Spirit the reins. So that's what that was about. <laughs> so good. Oh, that, that's a good word. Amen. Who else has a word? Something they sense what the Lord wants to do this year. He wants us to be steadfast in what has been said here today because it's really important. We cannot back off. We can listen and say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if we don't do it, if we don't jump in like Chris says and like everyone else here, we have to do it. And I am committing myself to do it. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, Craig. You're going to have to pull me up on this. So I know, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I'm not saying this is a prophetic word. I just talked to Kevin about this. This is not a prophetic word. It might be. But what I, what I had this thought the other day that came as a surprise was the United States came under judgment roughly when it began when we took prayer out of schools, right? Um, the, the Supreme Court made it illegal. Um, come all the way forward. If you don't know, in the last couple weeks, the Supreme Court overturned that, and now a football coach in Washington was allowed to pray. It's, you know, he was you know, wrongly terminated, right? So they changed that decision. And then the Lord made it, uh, just had this thought in my head was, whew, kind of intense, I don't know why. Um, but we, it's time to reverse that. It's time to reverse the judgment that's come across America. And we start by going to schools, every school, and in my head it was every school in the nation, people praying at school to reverse the judgment. And we do this until the judgments, all the evil is pushed back and we've won. And all the spoils of the enemy are again ours. Um, that's, I don't know where that, what that means for us. I don't know what that means for the nation. I don't, I'm just saying that's what I heard and understood so I'm just speaking it up. I don't know what we should do with it. Sounds like we need to strategize a little. Okay. All right. Well, Lord, let us strategize well. <laughs> Leave it at that. We've done a lot of prayer movements in schools. In fact, we used to we used to do a. Um, uh, we would take two days a year. We got permission from the school to line all around the high school, and we gathered as many willing adults as possible, and we held signs of encouragement and got to pray for kids as they entered the school. And it shifted the atmosphere of that school. They were like, kids are getting off the bus like, these people like us. You know, they, they, they really care. You know, and then we're blessing them and praying for them as they walked in the school. And teachers were like, this is a different school, right, on those days. So, yeah, I think, I think there's some, some good things to unlock there. Kira, did you have something you wanted to say? She's like, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. My name's Pamela Hausler. I come to this church mostly because Deanne's coming here. And um, I've been coming here since it crisp since like before you went on your sabbatical. And um, that makes almost makes me an old timer in this room. How about that? Um, and so I don't know about the rest of you, but I reviewed the Bible study and the, the fasting and the feasting and all that. And I read the table of contents on the Bible study, and I thought, there's no way a person can eat this by snacking. <laughs> so I did the whole feast. I actually opened up a new journal book, and I took some notes to it. And in there, in Genesis 1, I don't know what verses, but God created heaven, and he called it the firmament, the or filament. Yep. What did he call it? The above the Between the waters. Yep. 
And he doesn't even get around to making the light until much later. Yep. And then the second, he could see, see as well. well, I know he, he could see what was going on. It was his vision. Uh, so I'm just glad that he didn't really make me in charge of lightning, although I have prayed for that many times in my life. <laughs> um, so, but chapter two was, was like a, a third party dissertation of the details. So that was what I learned. And then Luke, there was like two women that actually, in my generation, we would say got knocked up. But one was really old. And she was having sex with her husband at a very old age in order to get pregnant with John. And he was so sassy to the Lord that the Lord made him bite his tongue and he could not talk. And so <clears throat> if I come here and I'm tongue-tied someday, you'll know why. <laughs> and the other one was Mary. She came. Is this wrong? I mean, no, so this good. is perfect. I love it. That's what I learned this morning. I know. Your delivery is excellent. And so Mary, she's not pregnant yet, but she goes to see Elizabeth, her cousin. Do you remember the age difference between those cousins? Wow. Six years. Wow. They must say that later in the story. No, it's oh. And um, so, like, that's a long time. But between John and Jesus was only six months. So they were like buds, you know? And uh, anyways, that's what I learned, and I read it. For anyone who thinks this is going to take forever, it only took, like, 45 minutes. And so um, awesome. that was that. And when I was coming out of my driveway, there's a church I could just walk to. And I thought to myself, you know, maybe when Deanne's not around anymore and she's with Jesus, I'll just stop going to that church and just walk across the street. That was, what, that was the worldly clamor that separates me from the spirit. Because I could walk here too. You know what I mean? It's not like very far. And uh, <clears throat> what's well, like four miles? So, um, anyways, there's always that the worldly clamor that wants to separate from the sunlight of the spirit. Okay, so, and I don't know about the sugar thing, I just know that means one thing. It said to me in my brain when she stood up here and said she was not getting enough sugar, I'm like, no pies. <laughs> <laughs> She can make pies without sugar, she said. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, awesome. I did. Thank you for coming up because I did want to hear from some more of the core team. So. Yeah. In Ephesians, it talks about in the second chapter, it talks about us all being woven together into love's fabric. It starts with his love. Amen. Being so in love with each other, with the extravagant love of the Father that he's shown us, we show each other. And that we honor and value each other like never before. Even though we see flaws and faults, I'll be the first one to say, sometimes I see that. But... Love overrides all of that. His extravagant love. And so Lord, I just pray that You would bind our hearts together. That the synergy would come from Your incredible love, Lord, that flows through each one of us. Lord, that that love would just um, bind us together in a way that we've never seen before. That that synergy, Lord, would come from that love, that incredible love that each one of us carry, Lord. And that we would love each other like never before. Thank you, Lord. Come on up, Anna. So I actually got a picture a couple of weeks ago that when you <laughs> when you went to that church a couple of weeks ago, and I actually ended up praying for you guys on the phone. Oh, yeah. um, and I got a partial picture, and it didn't make sense at the time. I almost didn't like texted you back, but um, this morning God kind of completed it with the synergy word. Um, my picture is of people in a pool. 
And have you ever played the game where you guys kind of go in a circle and it makes the whirlpool and it makes the center part deeper? Um, you are talking today about feeling alone. And so um, as an act of faith, I just felt us all in a pool going around and pulling together and making that whirlpool deeper in the center where like just God is saying, it's going to go deeper. It's going to go deeper. And then I got the picture of, it's also kind of fun because the pool splashes outside um, if you get it going fast enough. And it goes not just down, but it goes out. That was awesome. Amen. Amen. So when you were talking, the one word that stuck out to me today is together. And it's, it's, yeah, well, you know, and it's, it's together, 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 together. But you know, and that's, that's what's hitting me is that I've been in pain for two weeks and I've been praying, you know, and God said, you know, I, I, I gave my power to the disciples over healing. And I've given that power to you. And I've claimed that. But it also says where two or three are gathered together, I'm there with you. And anything that you ask in my name, I'm going to give it to you. I had to ask for prayer this morning. And God reinforced that by sharing that. My pain's gone. Whatever we ask together, we come in agreement together. He's here. We know he's here in this church. You know, as long as we're together in everything that we ask, he's going to grant that. So, Father, right now, I just ask that we come together unified as a body in your name that these things that we see that, that you've given us in our hearts, these visions, these prophetic words, Lord God, that you guide us, that you keep us together. Father, that in your name, it will all come to pass, that your vision becomes ours. Thank you, Father. Amen. What he's saying is we can't do this alone. We can't, we can't. The only time I want you alone is when you're coming to see me. The only time I want you to separate from the group is when you're spending time with me. Jesus would step away to spend time with me. I want you to be together. I've formed you as a body to be one, to work together to make this work. You can't do that on your own. You've got to come together as one unless you're spending the time with me. Father, I just thank you for that. I thank you for just letting us know what you want. So like Chris said, he doesn't do anything without telling the prophets. He's going to tell all of us apart. And we need every part of it to come together. Every part of it. So don't think you don't have a part. You have a part. The thing with the sugar, if, but it's, it's a theme that, like, Craig was saying he wanted to step up because he wanted to be a part of that. But that's just one little thing, the sugar. How many other little things is there like that that people are having difficulty with that if they do it with everybody, it's so much easier to get through it? The only way you get through an addiction is with you have somebody behind you helping you. And if you have everybody doing that, and if you have that 
something like that that you want help with, you have to tell everybody what it is. There's transparency in this too. There's a part you have to do. There's a part you have to give up. Just like Chris was saying, this is going to cost. It's going to cost the fact that you have to let every people know who you are and what you have and what you hide. So Father, I just thank you for letting us all open up to each other and just be a body, be one. In Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, amen. So, uh, one of the things that Chris was talking about in terms of, um, you know, together and in the in the servant in the sermon today about Sabbath rest, um, you know, that's one of the things that the Lord has been speaking to me over and over and over and over again over the last I don't know probably six months or so now, but especially lately, there's so much to do. (laughs) There's too much to do. There's too much in business. There's too much in life. There's too much with kids. There's too much with ministry. It's, it's all, there's too much. There's, it's all too much. Right. Um, but you know what? It's always going to be too much. There's not ever going to be a time when we think we fantasize about (laughs) when it's going to slow down or when there will be less to do or whatever that that doesn't happen. Right. That's just not reality. But God says tithe, tithe the Sabbath. Like it's that, the, the time with him. And if you look at, you know, Jesus's life and the miracles that he did, some of the greatest miracles were things that he did after right after he was alone with the Lord, you know, and that time is precious and it's, it's hard. It's a sacrifice (laughs) to shut off social media and stop doing business and not do ministry. And, you know, when there's 10,000 things and people knocking at the door, trying to bust it down to, to dedicate that time to God. But Oh, it's just like we don't like it's the the principle of synergy, right? Because when we go and take that time with the Lord, what we can do with him in the rest of the week and and the times that I have taken, that's that's what the visitation worship was all about. Those that that Mondays is my Sabbath day and just coming here to focus on worship and you know, he told me to open that up to everybody, but that was like my alone time with God, right? And and since I haven't been coming here, it's like the next step. Okay, now if you don't have that set aside and you're not thinking, you know, other people are depending on you to be there to, to are you are you still gonna do it? <laughs> are you still gonna keep that time separate um, for me? And it's it's a struggle. And I I I'll be honest on the weeks that I haven't done it or that I've only sort of partially done it because there's so much on my mind or so many things to do or whatever, the rest of the week just doesn't go so great. (laughs) It's not not nearly as good and productive and fruitful as it is on the times when I really honor that time with God. And so I just want to really encourage everybody. And God, I just pray that you would, that you would give us your revelation of what Sabbath rest means, that it's not about rules and regulations and following a tradition, but it's about spending time with you and about the principle of our synergy with you. And so, God, I just pray that you would just sink that revelation, sink that desire deep in our hearts to, be, to have that special time with you. Whatever that looks like in each of our lives, it's, it's different, but... But God, I just pray that you would, and and Chris talked about discipline, I pray that you would help us to let you work out the discipline of the Sabbath in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives, in our businesses, in our homes, in our ministries. God, that it's it's all yours anyway, and, and that we can accomplish so much more on your timeline than we can on our timeline. And so I just I just pray that blessing of that revelation over each one of us today.
and the, the, that we would come to you to, for the discipline to, to walk it out. All right, grab hands with somebody. <clears throat> Let Grant slide in. Perfect, perfect. Come on, Lori. Come get in. We lift ourselves as living sacrifices to you, Lord, to be, to be holy and set apart for you. We ask, God, that as we come before you over the next 21 days, as we seek your face, may we encounter you in greater measure. Father, if the only thing we get from this time is a deeper sense of your presence in our lives, God, we have won. Father, we just need you. Father, I'm asking that you would release people from bondage that they've been in. The perpetual sin would be broken over this 21 days. I pray, God, that for those who've been bound in offense, and in the burden of judgment, God, I pray that you set them free in the next 21 days. Father, I'm asking that you bring radical healing to physical bodies in the next 21 days. God, I'm asking that as we live lives of sacrifice before you, you would send your fire upon it. That you would consume it. And that what would be left would be only for your glory. Lord, we love you and we are committed to each other, to love one another as you've loved us. We're committed Father, I pray that we would be that people that as we seek your face and pray with one accord, your spirit would show up with power. Pray for these Wednesday nights, prayer times, that it would be the night of accord, the night of one accord, that we would come together with one accord and let your spirit move in might and power as we seek your face over the next three weeks. Father, I pray that you would take all of our excuses that we make to not obey, and that you just shine your light on it so we can see it clearly for what it is, and that we would do with it what we should always do with anything that is not of you and put it under our feet. That we would no longer give place to reasonings and to logic that is not sound with your will. So we want to hear your voice, God. We bless you, Lord. And I thank you that this amazing community stands together right now, together in one accord. Let your synergy come, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Come on, give God praise. This is great. Thank you for joining us today. Harvest Valley Worship Center is called to be a refuge for healing and a launch pad for transformation. If this message impacted you today, please let us know in a comment, or you can email us at media at hvwc.com. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to connecting with you.